Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is another video in our Koa Node Mongo series. So in the last video we connected Mongo to our code using Mongoose. Um, now we need to actually start setting up how we're going to be taking this data in so we can start um, building this blog. So what we're going to do is we have to just create what's called a schema. Think of a schema as sort of a template for what information can go in and out of our Mongo database. Because Mongo's unique in that sense that you could literally create in, as much information you want in there that's formed in any way. Um, it's not like your traditional SQL database where you kind of say, okay, there's this many rows, this many columns, and the information kind of has to match it. You can just kind of go willy-nilly with Mongo because it's all JavaScript objects that you're storing in the database. But we want to have some uniformity, some sort of structure to our data. So what the schema does, it defines a certain type of information we're going to be putting in and taking out of the database and makes it that when we put information into the database, it has the information that we asked for and nothing else. And when we pull information out of the database, we only pull the information we want, nothing else. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're creating one of these schemas. So we're doing this in the models folder. Okay, so we're going to make Anytime we make a model or a schema, we're going to do it in the models folder. In this case, it's the schema for our blog posts. So blog.js is the file that I'm doing it in. So we need to do is bring in Mongoose, okay, because Mongoose is going to tell us how we do this. And then I need to do this. I need to create a schema object. Because what we need to do is create a new instance of the schema object, which is going to be our blog schema. So we're going to say, hey, clons blog schema equals a new schema which really what we're doing is we're cloning the schema object and customizing it because objects in JavaScript are a little bit different than objects in other languages. This is what's called prototyping. So essentially every object is kind of a clone of another object, but it's kind of getting down into the weeds. But basically what happens is that when we create this blog schema, which is going to be a new schema, we have to pass an object into it. And the object that we pass into it basically is the filter, is, is that schema, it's the description. So we're saying there's really only two items in our blog post. Title, which is going to be a string, and the body of the blog post, which is a string. There are, you can, you can have other, as many fields as you want. You can have arrays in the fields, more objects in the fields. You can literally kind of create any kind of schema you'd like. And describe what type it is, set up default values, now, to learn all that, I would recommend reading through the, the Mongoose documentation, but this should give you the idea of what it's doing. It's creating this filter. So basically, when we pull stuff out of the database, it's only going to pull title and body. And when we put stuff into the database, it'll only put title and body. Now that we have the schema, we need to set up one more piece. So here we're creating block. What this blog is, it's a Mongoose model object. And that model object takes two, when it gets created, it takes two parameters. It takes where we're going to store it in our database, which is, again, um, if you remember from the last video, I mentioned that in a, in a Mongo database, each sort of table is referred to as a collection, and then every entry in that collection is called a document. So blog post is the collection we are going to use to store our data. And the way Mongo, Mongo, Mongoose works is that if the database that we chose uh, or if the collection that we chose doesn't already exist in our main database, it'll create it. Okay, so in that case, as long as you got your URL from Mongo Atlas and it's all connected right and we did everything fine in the last, we did in the last video, this will work just fine. So we're saying that we're going to store it in the blog post collection and we're going to make sure that data has to follow the blog schema, which we've created up here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export this. So module that exports then exports that object blog so we can use it somewhere else in our program. So now we've got to bring it back in our main index.js. So right under where we did all our Mongo connection stuff, I made a section for schemas. So here's, and again, for this blog, it's going to be really simple. It's just that one schema. But in the future, you might make it a separate model or separate schema for comments. So you might, you know, have a separate collection where you store comments versus where you store the actual blog posts, as an example. So here we go. I'm saying const blog equals require dot. And then I'm referring to that file that's in the models folder. 
Okay, so now that blog object I can use to interact with the Mongo database. So now going forward, we can start creating our routes and pulling information in and out of the database as we go forward in this project. So now we're trying to get to the real meat of we're going to start piecing this together over the next several videos. So I'll see you guys there. Have a great one. Thank you very much. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com.